We are in Muskegon, Michigan with the Teardown Titan, Sandy Monroe himself. And we are at the brink of the RoboTaxi launch that's happening tomorrow on Sunday, June 22nd. <laughs> Sandy, this is a big moment for the community. Not only, obviously, they have their RoboTaxi as the Model yeah. Y with CyberCab coming, but what are your thoughts on what tomorrow means for Tesla itself? For Tesla, uh, this is a gigantic step in the right direction. Um, I think, uh, basically, this is going to be the impetus, if you like, to get people back on track with Elon and, uh, and Tesla itself. Um, and by the way, Musk Egan. This is the way you say it, <laughs> Musk, as in Elon Musk. Egan. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, but but I think it's a big deal. I think it's a real big deal. There, there's. Uh, I was in the uh, tent just a minute ago, <clears throat> and that is the big topic of discussion. How is this going to impact um, not just um, not just Texas, but how is this going to impact the rest of the planet? And so you've got a guy up there from Great Britain, another guy from Germany, and Mr. Know It All, of course. You have to have him along. And uh, they're all talking about, you know, how is this going to impact? And I believe that Musk is leading the parade. Other people have had their products out there, but really and truly they've had uh, varying degrees of success. I drove all the way up here from uh, Lake Orion. <clears throat> That's like um, four, four and a bit hour drive. And um, I only touched the steering, or sorry, I only took it out uh, a couple, three times when some moron basically cut in front of me and maybe the car would have done something, but my foot was faster <laughs> than the reaction of the car. They probably figured, oh, it shouldn't be a problem, but when it gets too close, that's when I jump on the binders. But I think that, uh, I think that this is the, this is the golden moment for kids who don't want to learn how to drive. People in New York who never learned how to drive um, old folks who are saying, you know, I don't want to drive. And so I, I think this is, we're, this is an historic moment. Yeah, it, that's really what it feels like. And what, one thing that makes Tesla unique and, and partially why we're standing in front of a Model Y is they're already making the RoboTaxi. It's not this prototype. Yeah. Obviously, the CyberCab is here. Um, but what are your thoughts on them even being able to scale and, and their operations versus like what you've seen with like a Waymo or even Zooks or, or what was known as Cruise? Well, at the end of the day, <laughs> what was known as Cruz? Formerly known as Cruz. <laughs> but Rest uh, in but peace. anyways, um, um, so here's the thing. Elon Musk is already, there's pictures out all over the place with pictures of castings that don't look like a front or rear of a cyber truck or front or rear on a, on a, uh, a Model Y or a Model 3 or anything else. It's just different. What is that? Well, they've already, they're already in production. They do, they're building real cars. So when you see a prototype, like a Waymo running around, that's a prototype, it's not a real car. What, what he's bringing out is a real car that really does what it's supposed to do. It's all certified and everything. There's no reason on the plant, there's no reason in the world that they're not in production already. It is this car. It's as simple as that. Yeah. So really and truly, everybody else is, Testing their way to uh, to getting into greatness. Uh, Tesla's already there. I mean, yeah. that's the way it works. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's crazy because when you see a Waymo, you can clearly tell it's a Waymo. It's got the Jaguar Iron Pace with the insane amount of lidars, and this thing is like you know people were saying it's like in calling this out. You won't even notice that this is driving itself yeah. because this is like a Toyota Corolla of our day. Yeah, and it's just going to be driving and right. it, versus you see a Waymo. Like everyone stopped and looked at like all the insane, you know, uh, <laughs> sensors yeah. that it has. So, um, but what has your, been your thoughts too? Cause you sat down with Lars uh, and Franz when you, um, yeah. when they did the cyber cab. Yeah. What is your thoughts on, on, on that vehicle and what that, how that will change the industry? Well, the vehicle itself is utilitarian. It's not like, this is a glamor car. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the cyber truck, all of, Everything pretty much that they produce is a glamour car, but the, and I keep calling it the Model 2, everybody says, don't call it that. Okay, <laughs> fine. 
but it's got two people in it, and I think eventually that's what it will be called. But, but the cyber cab is vastly different. There's this has got Alcatraz and all kinds of fancy uh, materials inside of it. That doesn't. Not the the cyber cab does not have fancy materials. And the one that I was in had a rubber floor. That that's made for taxi. Okay, it's made for utility. It has a smaller screen. It's got you know it's comfortable no question about that but it's made for two people which is about the right number for uh, you know a taxi ride or what have you um it's it's just but it's not a y and it's not a cyber truck and it's not it's it's a utilitarian vehicle made for the man and that's the best way i can put it and it'll be the only thing that'll be able to um, uh, compete with the um, with the, uh, the BYD um, seal. seal. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if you saw the reveal uh, for the seal in uh, in Italy. I, I didn't see the reveal, but I've I've seen wow. one in Singapore. Well, I'll tell you what, um, they're going to crush it, and that's a fact. They're going to uh, they what they did was they when when the uh, when the Italian uh, government or Fiat in general decided they were going to bring out the Fiat 500, a car for the masses, like what Germany did with the VW Beetle. Um, that uh, Volkswagen is Volkswagen, you know, Volks cars. That's what it. That's what the Fiat 500 was supposed to be. And when they brought it out, they did something very similar with the, um, you know, backdrop of, uh, of the. Uh, Colosseum and all these great monuments that that are sitting around in in Italy. That's what that's what BYD did, and uh, I think it's brilliant. I think yeah. what they did was really really clever. Yeah. Uh, BYD is a real car company, and they are real fast. And and quite frankly, the only competition that Tesla has is BYD. Yeah. The rest of the guys, they don't make any money. They don't make a lot of cars. Um, uh, yeah, our traditional OEM, BMW, whatever, um, Ford, uh, General Motors, they just move a lot too slow. A lot too slow. They, well, we better think about it. Why you're thinking this is to do it. And I think that what, uh, what's going to happen with the, uh, the Model Y release and later on the, uh, the it's just going to kick everybody's ass. Yeah, yeah I've been really <laughs> impressed with BYD. I got to experience the SEAL when I was in Singapore. Uh, yeah. But on the robo-taxi side, what do you, how do you think the rollout is going to look over the next couple of months? Well, uh, I'm not that we're going to hold you to it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. I never know how to gauge the market anymore. Uh, there's so much emotion and so much, uh, you know, Oh, I can't drive that because I'm a Democrat. I'm not going to drive it because I'm a Republican. And I, so the one thing that you can, uh, <clears throat> like, one thing you can say is that Trump has united the nation. <laughs> Everybody hates everything. At the end of the day, I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. But I know what I want to have happen. I want this rollout to be spectacular. Like right now, the uh, the the numbers associated with. Um, the, the numbers associated with um, uh, Tesla's driving record per million miles is astronomically low compared to everybody else. Nobody else has anything in it. And why is that? Well, because most people that have a Tesla go, whoop, and, uh, and they, they press that last time, that, uh, sorry, right hand button, and, uh, and they're driving, or the car is driving itself. You know what? That's safer. People make mistakes, a lot of mistakes. And... Quite frankly, um, one pop too many, and uh, you may have yourself a, an accident, cause yeah. somebody else to have an accident. So I think that by moving into the robo taxi, we're going to see a lot of people that are going to say, "Do I need to own a car?" Yeah. Okay, and that's that's what's really going to be the, the differentiator, and it's going to be way cheaper than um, 
Uber or, or Lyft or anything else. So Yeah. And to even double down on your point, uh, Kathy Wood has said that Uber rides per mile will cost between 2 to $4, where at scale, Tesla will cost $0.25. Cents. Yeah. Um, but kind of, you know, what you said, it was an interesting point that, you know, the volume for uh, cars may have peaked. Oh, they and have. There's no, no, everybody's going to say that. Two reasons. One, not everybody is a driver. Okay, so if you're a, new, uh, if you're a baby boomer like me, um, you'll probably, you know, you've fooled around with cars your whole life. You've had them with the, you like that room, room noise or going fast or stuff like that. Not today. Folks in your generation really just want to get from here to there. And while they're there, they want to do this. Yeah. It's a totally different lifestyle. And that's what Elon has, has focused his attention on is the totally different lifestyle. So you got guys like me, okay. I can still drive fast. I still have a cyber truck. I still do donuts and okay, that I'm the rarity. At 76 or whatever, um, I'm the rarity. Most of these guys are kind of like, well, you know, I just gotta get in front yeah. of my TV. That's <laughs> horseshit. Get up and do something. But yeah. uh, but uh, most of the people that I interview for jobs and stuff like that at Monroe that are young, oh, just a minute. I have to get this guy a text back. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are you shitting me? That guy? No, he ain't getting a job. Next. You know, yeah. that's uh, so it's a different kind of uh, work ethic, lifestyle. Everything is different. Everything yeah. nowadays. So I think that this is going to be the car of the future. Yeah. I really do. And it's got a, only two seats. Nobody has kids. You have kids. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your service. Yeah. <laughs> I have four. Yeah, four. Love, well, yeah. Shout out to my kids. Yes. And wife. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, but I, uh, nobody has kids. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. And I think you, you sized it and I thought, I think you put it in, in the best way, you know, uh, cause even again, my father, um, yourself, like that generation, like you, you know, you like to tinker, you want to get your hands dirty. Yeah. You want to hear that, uh, that engine revving versus a lot of the millennials in the generations after me, they just, they just want it to work. They want to press a button. They want to stick their foot on the wheel and go they don't care to to know about all the maintenance they don't want to yeah. be you know hassled by the the uh all of the the service that you have to do on these vehicles right yeah. and it's the same thing with uh, i mean men and women but even taking uber like how the how the robo taxi will revolutionize that people want to get in a, a taxi nowadays they don't want to talk to the driver they just want to go no. and, yeah. and not deal with anyone right. and also feel safe so you remove the driver people are going to feel a lot more comfortable yeah. getting into one well, at so. the end of the day, um, I, I just see nothing but positive, okay? Now, can something else happen? <laughs> I don't know, because, you know, I've been on this planet for a long time. And uh, quite frankly, this year has been uh, quite a shit show. I, uh, I got to tell you, and I'm talking the full year, so that'd be half Biden and half Trump. And I couldn't believe what was happening over here. And now I can't believe what's happening here. I mean, how in it? This country needs a third party. I don't care what you call it, as long as it's not communist or fascist. I want a third party, something for, we'll call it the normal people party or something where we don't have radical this or, yeah. or insane that. So. I've gone full circle. Um, a year ago, I was being called uh, that I was gay for driving the Cybertruck. With four kids. Yeah, with four kids. Um, and then this year I've been called, but I, I don't want to say it because I don't want it to get censored, but what you would call uh, people following, uh, or whatever you want to call it, um, N-A-Z-I. We'll just put it that way. But, oh, you know, I've been... The, the, national, yes. the national Workers <laughs> Socialist <laughs> Organization. Yeah, I can't remember yeah, exactly. You know, fascist, whatever you want to call it. But it, but it like, fascism is socialism. I don't get it. So communism is here. And right next door to it is 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 fascism. Yeah, They're the same. Everybody thinks yeah. it's this way. It's not. This is the way things work. Yeah. Up here you had the American dream. Down here you got socialism, fascism, and you got communism. They're right next to each other. We should move backwards a bit. I mean, yeah. common sense. There's it's, another name we could use. So yeah. Common sense. Yeah, uh, it's been, but full circle, especially party. living in, in the Silicon Valley, we've seen it all, and I assume in, in some parts of here in Michigan, especially being oh, yeah. in Motor City and stuff. But, uh, and the Cybertruck, out of all the cars, has been the one targeted. Um, but either way, it's really exciting times for Tesla. You know, they're, 
as you said, there's only positive things that are going to happen from this. Yeah. Um, so looking forward to seeing how, how this rolls out um, and really hopefully how it extends from Austin to the greater Texas area, potentially, hopefully crossing my fingers in the Bay Area at some point, maybe even Los Angeles, um, just depending on obviously regulation approval. But uh, Sandy, thank you so much for, right. for your time. Welcome, thank you for John. being yeah. a friend. If you want to also you. see him, he's going to be uh, one of the uh, keynote speakers at the X Takeover in July yep. 25th and 26th. Um, and just a wealth of knowledge unmatched uh, from anyone that I've personally ever met. So um, thank you again for your time today and all of your insights. You're welcome. Welcome, John.